ourselves on this show. Now we'd say 10 to 7 this morning for the past 75 years one man has been boldly going where none of us have gone before. Britain's best known astronomer Patrick Moore. He may be three quarters of a century old but he's as outspoken as ever. His latest target is NASA and it claims that there are huge quantities of water on the moon. Martin Frizzell is with him live this morning in his back garden in Sussex. Good morning Martin. Good morning, Ross. We'll come on to that NASA thing in just a second, but uh, I keep on to call him Sir Patrick. I can't believe you've not been knighted yet. Lord, no. Me? I'm, a, I'm an astronomer. But there's, <laughs> there's an OBE and a CBE in there somewhere, isn't there? I will see them. <laughs> now, this, believe it or not, this book uh, was given to a young Patrick Moore 69 years ago by his mother, and you were six years old then. I was indeed. And you read it all the way through, all about the solar system. It's a big, serious book for a youngster. Well, it was. My reading was all right. I mean, I curled up in the armchair, and I wouldn't be pulled out until I finished it. And I remember saying, I like this. And he's gone on since then, 75 years, uh, celebrating his birthday just a few days ago. Uh, this is where Patrick lives in the beautiful Selsey down the West Sussex coast. And you may remember Selsey from the new year because if you have a look down here, what happened to your observatory, Patrick, with the tornado? We had, we had a tornado, it whipped across here, and as you can see, it took the roof off. Luckily, the telescope itself was undamaged, and so the foundation. That can be put dry, so I was very lucky. Had that been 20 yards further to the east, it would have gone through my house, which is a 13th century patch. And that would have been total disaster. So I got away very lightly. Now, controversial um, piece of weather. That also controversial. Just a few days ago, in that NASA came out with the startling news that water has been found on the moon. Don't tell me what you think of it yet, but this is what NASA had to say just a few days ago. We have the first unquestionable results indicating that there are significant quantities of water at both lunar poles. If our estimates are correct right now, that we are dealing with, let's say, a hundred. Uh, million metric tons that's equivalent to a lake about two miles on a side four square miles and about 35 feet deep uh, so that's a lot of water the implications of course are tremendous that was NASA Patrick saying a hundred million metric tons of water on the moon is that uh, is that the case well uh, no <laughs> First of all, there is no water on the moon. You can't have liquid water there. There's no air pressure. If there's any h o at all, it's in the form of ice. Inside the deep craters near the moon's pole, never receive, never receive any sunshine at all. I must admit, I think we need further information before we can say that it's definitely there. So you're, you're saying this morning NASA is not telling the truth. You do no, not I'm not saying, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there is no liquid water on the moon. There can't be. If there's any h o there, uh, the H2O there at all, it must be in the form of ice, mixed in with the lunar material, inside these very deep polar craters, and very, very hard to get at. OK, now listen, uh, Patrick should know, because he mapped NASA, the moon <laughs> for NASA, didn't you? Back A in, long back, time ago, back, yes. Back in the 60s. Before the uh, Apollo got there. Let's go into this. This observatory was not damaged by the... Um, or it was damaged, but it was actually moving around, but it's still standing. That's the main yes. thing. Let's go in. This is a 15-inch one, isn't it? Yep. 15-inch telescope. 15-inch so, reflector. Tell me a bit, um, when you think back over your 75 years, you know, looking at the stars, what is the one thing, the one memory, the, the one real historic point in that period? Well, I think you've got to say man on the moon, haven't you? I, I had an early one on that. Way back in 1959, the Russians sent an unmanned probe, Lunar 3, around the moon and got pictures of the far side. They never see from Earth, it was turned away from us. And they'd used my maps of the moon's edge to try them up. And they came through and actually on the air doing a live broadcast. I remember that very well. And what about the man, Neil Armstrong, being in the moon? Just what do you remember about that day when he landed? Well, I was in the studio set on the BBC, they were all the commentaries. And I remember, because they were going down, it was entirely new, and had they made a faulty landing, they couldn't have got back. So when I heard Neil's voice coming through, the eagle had landed, I felt great relief. And when we have come on, so leaps and bounds since then to a degree, and we almost had a few months ago this, another historic, life on Mars, according to NASA again. Again, I'm afraid that I'm decidedly sceptical. Uh, the claim is that a meteorite that came down in Antarctica comes from Mars and contains evidence of past Martian life. But I say, I think we're only going to go about that one when they finally get sampled back from Mars, and that should be in two or three, four or five years from now. Now, also, people, I mean, the real sort of thing people watch these days are the X-Files, it's supernatural, it's about beings from outer space. Are there intelligent life forms out there? Do you believe I'm that? sure there's plenty of life up there. Not in our own solar systems. After all, our sun, one of a hundred, thousand million stars in our galaxy alone and there must surely be plenty of uh, planets going on those stars. There are inhabited. On the other, they're a long, long way away. I mean, light years away. There's no proof of it yet. Patrick, thank you very much indeed. Now, just to celebrate your 75th birthday, you're in a lecture tour of Britain. And I think it's this Thursday, Queen Elizabeth Hall in London. Yes, so indeed. I've been doing a few lectures. I've never done a lecture tour before. I think probably the last one I'd rather do. It's a one-off. It's been great fun.
Patrick, thank you very much indeed. Back with Patrick in about an hour's time, Ross. But uh, the word from Patrick this morning is, there is life out there, Ross, but not as we know it. Not as we know it, Martin. <laughs> thank you very much. So we're just admiring your guest there, thinking that Anne and I remember quite clearly there was moon landing 30 yeah, years ago. Definitely. And Mr. Patrick Moore hasn't changed. He's just the same. Hasn't changed a bit. We want to know that secret. Yeah. Uh, we haven't got it because we've got to go now. That's it from the news hour for today. Sorry. Has been boldly going where none of us have gone before. That's because he's been probing deep space. Now, he's Britain's best known astronomer. He's Patrick Moore and he's three quarters of a century old. 75 he was yesterday, but uh, he's still as outspoken as ever. So is Martin Frizzell. There, oh, I thought that was going to be him then. That's the weather vane, obviously, on top of Patrick Moore's house in Selfie. Martin, are you there? Hello. Fiona, who else, who else on top of their chimney would have a weather vane like that? Isn't that wonderful? Made by a local Gorgeous. craftsman for Patrick. Uh, for, how, how long ago was that made for Somebody else, yeah, my great friend, the Woodwells, had it made for me for a Christmas present. A marvellous Christmas present. Absolutely fabulous. And this is Patrick's house here down on Selsey, uh, just on the West Sussex coast. You've lived here for how long, Patrick? 30, over 30 years now. 30 years. Of course, Selsey, you may remember from uh, just a few months ago, from the new year, was, of course, the site, the victim of that awful tornado that came through. And this one did to Patrick's garden. He's got several observatories dotted around the place, and this one here was, well, as you can see, roof just completely taken off. I was very, very lucky. The tornado whipped through the garden. It missed the house, which you can see is 13th century thatch. So, uh, missed my main observatory. And not so very look, the telescope itself was undamaged. The top, as you can see, is damaged. The, the, the rest of it is not. So uh, it can be put right. I was very lucky indeed. And you're in the local curry house at the time, aren't you? About 500 yards up the road, yes. Yeah. So still, 75 years on, you can still have a good curry. <laughs> now, this is 69 years ago, when Patrick was just six, his mother gave him this book to read. A six-year-old read The Story of the Solar System, a big serious book for a six-year-old, but... It was, in fact, um, I found it in the bookshelf. I was sitting in the armchair, and was in my hour doing and found this there, picked up, read it, decided it was interesting, and should be carried along. And, and it's been history ever since then, basically, he's gone on to be uh, Britain's uh, best, best known astronomer. People seem to think that you're Sir Patrick for some reason. Now. Why not, should they? <laughs> well, maybe, maybe that's still to come. No way. And controversial as ever, because just a few days ago, NASA from America, of course, uh, came out with uh, what they said was an historic announcement that there was water on the moon. Here's how they announced it. We have the first unquestionable results indicating that there are significant quantities of water at both lunar poles. If our estimates are correct right now that we are dealing with, let's say, 100 uh, million metric tons, that's equivalent to a lake about two miles on a side, four square miles, and about 35 feet deep. Uh, so that's a lot of water. The implications, of course, are tremendous. Well, Patrick, you heard them there. They're saying there's a lake 35 feet deep, 100 million metric tons on the moon. Is that, is that the case? This is perspective. It's not water at all. It's ice, if it's there at all. It, uh, sorry, you can't have liquid water on the moon. There's no air pressure. It's simply evaporate. If anything there at all, it's in the form of ice, mixed in with the lunar rocks, mm -hmm. only in the floors of the deep polar craters, which never receive any sunlight at all. Therefore, it can be very, very inaccessible. Because NASA was saying, hey, this is it, we can start to colonize the moon now almost, so I shouldn't pack my bags just yet, should I? No, I think not. I see. Um, if they've done their work very well indeed, it's going to be taken very seriously. All I will say is this, if it turns out there is another one that doesn't involve ice, I won't be entirely surprised. Okay. Come inside here. This is, this is another of Patrick's observatories that uh, was also damaged during the tornado. This bit can't move, used to move. This is the 15-inch refractor. No, the reflector. Reflector. Reflector, reflector. reflector. Now, the telescope itself, as you can see, was undamaged. Uh, the only point is the dome was slightly distorted, and the ring is not perfectly circular now. There's an input right, but that's not coming down. The telescope totally unhurt, you can see. Now, in those uh, 75 years that you've been on this uh, worldly planet, yeah. what is the most historic event that you've covered? I suppose, really, you've got to say the first man on the moon, haven't you? Because I was doing the live commentaries in BBC Studio 7 when that happened. I'd come back from a conference in NASA, I was one of the on the moon map team, and I came back and we heard them going down. And when I heard it was a very risky thing to do, and had they made a faulty landing, they couldn't have got back. Therefore, when I heard Neil's voice coming through, the eagle had landed, I felt immense relief in the orbit. And why have we um, sort of halted after that? We had a few more moon shots, but not no, the The point is, the Americans put most of their cosmic eggs into one basket, the shuttle. And the shuttle took far longer to develop than people expected, cost far more, and they had that ghastly challenge of treasury. And it seems things have slowed up, they haven't really. Now listen, just go back to NASA for a second. Uh, water on the moon, you, you doubt that. Life on Mars? Again, frankly, I doubt that too. Um, uh, the, an Antarctic meteorite coming from Mars, carrying traces of Martian life, well, it may be so. And we'll know about that in a few years' time, because by 2004, 2005, we should be able to send an unmanned rocket to Mars, scoop up Martian material, 
and bring it back for analysis. And then we'll know whether there ever has been any trace of life on Mars. I'm 50-50 on that one. Fiona, the great thing about Patrick is you may think that he's skeptical about all these kind of science fiction things, uh -huh. but you, you like Star Wars? Uh, Star Wars is a great fan, but of course, nothing ever quite up to Quater Mass. Quater Mass? Quater Mass. Mass. Quater Mass of the Pit, a marvellous film. Well, all England watched Quater Mass, I think. <laughs> Well, it's a happy birthday for me. Fiona, any questions? Yeah, Patrick, I'd, I'd just like to know, because of course we all know you from Sky at Night. You've been doing it for over 40 years now. Are you going to keep on going? Why not? Um, people, seem, people seem to like it, and I'll do my best. I, mean, it's, um, I think it has, has a fairly good audience always, and I hope it's encouraged quite a lot of people to go on to the air, uh, go on to a storm so I'll carry on longer they want me. Good. Music to our ears, Patrick. I, I keep wanting to call you Sir Patrick Moore as well. <laughs> Everyone does. Good Lord, no. <laughs> Thanks for joining uh, us this morning. I'll tell you why. Yeah. About four or five years ago, the gossip columnist at the time referred to me as Sir Patrick. And they, 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 these rumours are difficult to stop. I'm sure it's not true. Bit of kind of to give, give me a night of I'm sure her marriage has well, no reason why she should. There's something even better than that, you know, just the last shot we have to leave. You remember E.T. Well, this is... There's a bigger man on a bicycle going yeah. over the moon. <laughs> that was the, invita the invitation of my 40th anniversary Sky at Night party. And Patrick, if you want to catch him, is on a lecture tour around Britain and he's at Queen Elizabeth Hall this Thursday in London. Yeah, and happy 75th birthday, Patrick, from all of us here and from two intelligent life forms in Southie. Back to us, I'm afraid. 7.44. Mm. One of uh, life's and television's great characters and uh, huge inspiration. Mm. Watching him on Sky at Night. When I was always a youngster, I used to watch mm. Sky at Night. And mm. you wanted, of course, that's how you get your first telescope. You go out there and you... Yeah, well, he said that. Out. That's why he's going to keep on going. Yeah. So it encourages people. But although nobody could tell you when Sky at Night is ever on, what day of the week, mm -hmm. what time. Mm -hmm. of the, it's on once a month, isn't Stumble it? Or something, it. Something like that now. But anyway, that's when you...